Trey Lance uh, was traded away from San Francisco. I don't want to say they didn't give him a chance, but they kind of sort of didn't give him a chance. You know? Brock Purdy, uh, according to the profile, 88.2% success rate in their intermediate middle of the field, highest in the NFL. I think we're really hoping that Brock Purdy becomes like Kirk Cousins, right? Look at the release. There's your separation. Wait, wow. Stutter and go. Gets by clean. That is unbelievable. That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen. So our guy Derek Klassen goes through and charts Brock Purdy. And the findings, Matt Harmon, why, uninspiring, um, that I would say is probably the nicest way. Uh, to put what we found in, in terms of the numbers for Brock. Well, first of all, just kind of like Trey Lance post-mortem for the San yeah. Francisco 49ers. Um, yeah, it has to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, like draft day trade-up failures, really, of, of all time. Like, it's got to be one of the yeah. worst. And, and yeah, I, I wouldn't say they never gave him a chance. It was also just like... I think everything that could go wrong for Lance did go wrong. Like this was already a guy that, you know, had so little actual time spending spent playing and passing at the quarterback position coming into the NFL. Right. Um, you know, and they want him to sit a year behind Jimmy Garoppolo. Last year, we we barely see him play. One game in like a monsoon, the other game he gets hurt in the middle of it, and we and we never see the guy again. Like the injury is the unfortunate thing, but right. I don't I do think that this was a failure by Kyle Shanahan and you know he said as much um talking about this move after the fact that he really feels like he failed Trey Lance and I think that that is, that is what happened here it was a failure to develop the player I will say you know and this is what makes the Brock Purdy thing so interesting I think if they don't have that stretch with Brock Purdy at the end of last year Trey Lance mm -hmm. is number one still on this roster yeah. and number two if like almost regard no, nothing really that happens with Trey Lance right now matters, right? Because he's not going to see the field in Dallas, you know. He's for a, a, pro, maybe ever, right? He might he probably might never suit up in a regular season game for the Dallas Cowboys. That's on the on the table here. But I think if Purdy doesn't work out, we're going to be having this conversation about wow, they really effed up this Trey Lance thing. Wow, they really maybe didn't give him a chance, but they certainly mismanaged the situation. Now, right. if he doesn't, if he does work out, we aren't have like I don't think. I think people will hold their feet to the fire about Trey Lance, but really at the end of the day, they'll win games and nobody will care if Brock right. Purdy ends up working out. Like they'll have fallen ass backwards into a solution here at the position. So this brings us to the Purdy stuff here. He's accurate over the, in the intermediate middle of the field, right? I mean, that is the base area of this offense. He's got a little bit of pop, like an average level pop, maybe throwing deep and outside the numbers, right? Like, Nine routes, corner routes, out routes are, you know, relatively within the average of, of mm -hmm. the guys that Derek has sampled here. I, I don't know. Again, I, I find myself like, yeah, I think it, I, I think if we're talking about Brock Purdy is the next Tom Brady, which obviously some like major media outlets are, are ready and rearing to make that comparison. <laughs> yeah, I think the profile is pretty uninspiring if that's what you think. <laughs> but do you think Tom, like right. Brock Purdy is a guy that we've seen execute the offense and can probably execute this specific offense going forward? Then I think like, yeah, this is what I expected. Okay, so if Brock Purdy is going to be more of a Brad Johnson type where he's just a manager of the game, don't mess up too much, which is, by the way, the funny thing about Jimmy Garoppolo is that like the, the guy had a lot of turnovers. He had a lot of backbreaking he's a, yeah. turnovers. It's like it was so yes. odd, you know? It didn't make any sense. It's not a good game, man. She was turning the rock over. Like, what are we talking about here? Uh, Brock Purdy, uh, according to the profile, 88.2% success rate in their intermediate middle of the field, highest in the NFL. And this guy was just an absolute dig route specialist. Uh, what we saw him throw in that dig uh, for that dig route uh, was, was really, really good. Um, and I think, Matt, I think it really kind of, you know, again, pairs up nicely with what Brandon Ayuk does, uh, who was also one of the top, you know, dig route runners in the NFL as well. Yeah, same with Debo Samuel, too. I've said that um, Debo Samuel and, like, Jimmy Garoppolo throwing dig routes against zone coverage, like, that is really, like, you know, again, we get caught up with the gadgety stuff with Debo Samuel, like, oh, the wide back nonsense, like, oh, let's have – I really don't want to see Debo Samuel running up the gut at this point anymore. Like it's, it's about yeah, enough I of that. Know, right. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. The thing with Debo is that he is a good receipt, like a receiver on these like dig routes. Right. Like, and, and I think that lines up with Purdy and yeah, we've detailed with Brandon Ayuk, like the development of Brandon Ayuk against man coverage 
running those dig routes. And actually, when you look at it, I know um, like Scott Barrett and Graham Barfield, who work for Fantasy Points, have I've seen them both point this out on Twitter that when you look at the splits of against heavy man defenses, Ayuk goes off against heavy zone defenses, Debo Samuel goes off. And I think that makes right. sense based on the reception perception data and just where these guys run routes. So I think the fact that you do have two great players working over the middle of the field, it's pretty important uh, for this Brock Purdy profile to see him this good on dig routes. Cause that's the Jimmy Garoppolo stuff in the outside the numbers on the 10 plus yard, the 20 plus yard, Uh, Some of these 20 plus yard throws generally are a little bit more encouraging than the short numbers for Brock Purdy is I think that what shows that what he added on to Jimmy Garoppolo, which was an ability to push the ball down the field and create a little bit more deep and outside the numbers that does make sense for elevating a guy specifically like Brandon Ayuku we care about. So it's interesting. Brock Purdy, again, in that intermediate middle was great. Um, And in the 11, just in general, in that 11 to 15 yard range, he was the second best in terms of success rate, 85 percent success rate in that 11 to 15 yard range. That was the second best among charted quarterbacks. So that's really good. Okay, now this is where it gets really, really bad. 27 percent success rate on tight window throws. That was easily easily the worst in the NFL. Derek Klassen noted that uh, it was just a combination of a lack of arm talent, but also a lack of touch. Brock Purdy lacking both the velocity and the touch, that could be a little bit of a problem. Yep, I think that is definitely an area, the touch part of it, where he's going to have to get better. Uh, Because the velocity, right? I mean, he can, you can increase arm strength, I think, but overall arm talent, like maybe not so much. I think we're really hoping that Brock Purdy becomes like Kirk Cousins, right? Uh, And and I've said on this show, I've said on uh, a lot of the last few uh, last few months that like the weirdest thing that's happened to me this offseason is I've become a little bit Kirk pilled. Uh, By (laughs) by the way, Derek's profile did a little bit of that work, right? For sure. Um, But you know, obviously, I think Kirk is having his best seasons right now into his thirties because he's seen everything, like. I think, the, and Derek mentioned this too, some of the pre-snap stuff with Brock Purdy was a little bit discouraging, which mm-hmm. makes sense because he's a rookie quarterback. He hasn't seen right. um, all, you know, everything that you'd, you'd want. So I think that, as Purdy gets experience, can be more, uh, can, can be a better part of his game. Like, again, we've seen that with Kirk. Even Jared Goff is a great example, right? Like Jared Goff, um, he's... He's be- I think Jared Goff's better now than he was in the early, even in the early part of the Rams days when he was yeah. having some of his best statistical results because he's just seen more and he's played more. And I think that's you know the argument of what's gone wrong with Trey Lance is he's never, pl- he's never played. We have no idea right. who he is. Purdy, I think, like as he gets more experience, maybe that catches up a little bit too, and that can offset some of the lack of velocity. But I agree the touch part is definitely something that needs to improve. Um, you mentioned the short area stuff, the quick game stuff for Brock Purdy. Worst among charted quarterbacks in the one to five yard range. That's not good. 68% success rate um, in that short area, that one to five yard range. 68%. The next lowest, Matt, was 77%. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of like where this the holes are in this guy's game. You got to get that quick game going. Um, especially nowadays, maybe, maybe not so much with Christian McCaffrey, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe he will kind of be a band aid uh, in that range, but still though, 68% success rate with the next lowest being 77%. That's really bad. And then Matt in that 16 to 20 yard range, by far the lowest 20% uh, success rate in that 16 to 20 yard range. Desmond Ritter, who I don't think anyone was like, oh, Desmond Ritter had a great season. Desmond Ritter was the next lowest charted quarterback at 33%. So clearly some not just holes in in Purdy's game, but gaping. I mean, just like, oh, my God, holes uh, in his game, according to the sample. 